Thanks for joining us for the episode, and we are going to be doing some movie reviews. I'll go ahead and tell you it's a little bit of a longer episode because it's been too long since we reviewed the movies, and there's been a lot of movies to review. So uh, our producer, Bo, joins us for this episode. My name is Luke Clayton, and welcome to the Must Increase podcast. We just got back from watching uh, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part One. Yeah, Dead um, Reckoning Part One. Are, it's fresh, fresh on our minds. So we are going to review that, mm-hmm. and we—it's been a while since we did a movie review. So we're going to move back through some of the stuff that we've seen over the summer here. So yeah, man, let's dive in. All right, so I, I got a question for you. All right, yeah, yeah, go a, ahead. On a, just very first thing, on a scale of one to ten, ten being obviously awesome. Where was it? Now, once again, this is only part one. Yeah, but it's part what one. Do you th- what was your initial thought? Uh, I mean, I would I would say it is. It's a, it's, it's at least an eight. I was gonna say eight. Yeah. Uh, um. For me, right now, the, everybody knows this. By now, my standard of films has become Top Gun Maverick. I mean, that oh, was oh, the yeah. latest tin right, to right. come out. So here's the thing. Obviously, this is Tom Cruise yet again. Of course. Um. He has, or, or, or this be, this was the first time that I'm watching a movie uh, since Top Gun Maverick that I kind of felt that edge of edge of my seat type thing going on. Oh yeah, you know, especially there at the end, all this crazy. And I'm trying, to, I always try to determine how spoilery do we get here. I was, I was actually thinking about that um, on the way over here. Because... By the time this releases, the movie's been out for a couple weeks, and so I, I, I don't know. Like, like we'll be, we'll be mildly spoilery. Okay. So there's this scene the, the... on a train. I think we could say that much. Right. And the, it, it's, it's like this train is potentially meeting its demise, and it's right. how they escape the scenario. It's you're just like, oh. oh Okay, they're good. Oh yeah. no, they're not. Oh, okay, no, okay. they're good. Let's, let's go back. We're getting, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, let's, that's at the very end. Let's go back because yeah. obviously, okay, opening scene, great. Yeah, yeah, great opening scene. Very edge of your seat, like right away. Mm-hmm. Super intense. It really grips you. Yeah, and yep. all of a sudden you're like, whew, you know, and then yeah. you know. So and you was, you probably noticed this. They basically started and ended with like almost identical mirror image shots. You yes. probably noticed that. Like, yes, like I did. It, 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 I thought I, it, it hit right away. I was like, oh, that's cool. I what, did. I know. did notice that. I thought um, the whole the, the ice upside yep, down. The, I was yep, like, yep, yep, that's that was um, a great shot. Actually. So the the overall movie, I I really liked it. I, I don't have a lot of bad to say, but again, it's fresh on my mind. I haven't had a lot of time to process it. Right. You know, I don't think we've ever done a review like this where it's like we literally no, just saw okay, this let's, thing. Let's talk things I didn't like. Okay, yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's talk let's, things let's bad start there. first. Let's and start then... with the uh, the cons, if you will. Okay. I, I'm i always hesitant when new characters come on. Okay. It, because really, for the longest time this has been, you know, obviously Ethan, Benji, mm-hmm. and... Uh, and uh, Luther, Luther, yep. You know, so and th- those are always the main guys. Sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, maybe somebody comes in real quick. You yeah. Know, but like, this almost looks like they're setting up. Like, hey, this particular person's going to be around a long time. Yeah. And I didn't really like the person that much. Like, yeah. You talk about a- the female character yes. here. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I, I, well, here uh, I get what you're saying. I'll, I'll let you finish your thought. Okay. Though. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't really necessarily like that part of it. Um, Actually, go ahead and rebuttal, and then I'll... Can... Well, the only thing I was going to say about that character... Okay. So, I actually kind of like how she is... So, she's a thief. She's a pickpocket. pickpocket. Okay, that's not a big giveaway. I mean, right. you know, it's part of the story. So, she's good at that. Yes. I do like how she's... Uh, call me sexist, but I like how she's not, like, this total kick-butt woman. Like, she kind of struggles. True. Because, here's, man, here's what gets me. Like, anytime I see a- a- these movies where these these just these women can just take out these huge hulking men, right. it's like, no. Like, yeah. that, I, like, like a Black Widow. Like She could fight an army you know, of a thousand. I, it's like, no. Yeah, I'll let it, I'll let it slide for sake of just letting me, because letting, it's, it's cool to watch Marvel and whatever. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. But I kind of do like that. Like, I mean, she, this she is really dependent right. on on kind of Tom Cruise or Ethan Hunt to help her. Right, she um, gets cold feet a lot. Yep, yep, you know, she yeah, know she doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I can see that. So, That's real, um, very realistic. But yeah, I mean, she's a. Uh, this is the same. And I mean, if you've seen the trailer, you know this. I believe it's Haley Atwell. That's I think that's the I I actress's really name. She's I'm... from Captain America. She played uh, Peggy. 
she Peggy did, Carter. Yeah, dude, that's I Peggy. I told myself, I said, this looks like Peggy. Yeah, that is. Told, that's who that is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that makes total sense. So she's she's Captain America's love was, interest. Okay. Um, but, okay. Uh, but yeah, so, but you're right. I mean, they're bringing in a, a new character and you have to, whenever you do that, you, you have to consider like character development points and everything and i don't know do you have any issue with that uh i don't it's just okay as soon as we kind of figured out she was just some pickpocket nobody Mm -hmm. my mind went back to i think it's like a mission impossible three the same thing opens up like he gets involved with this girl who's just a pickpocket i'm just doing this job for this guy i thought it was a little bit and once again, we're, we're criticizing, you know, yeah, Mission you know, Impossible. We're yeah. looking, we're, we're kind of nitpicking a yeah, little bit because okay. nothing's perfect. You know, yeah, I, I thought it was, I don't know. I just wasn't crazy about it. Okay, uh, all right. Moving on from that character-wise, I felt like right away, because here's the thing, you know, taking a little storyboard brand mm-hmm. type thing, mm-hmm. I thought there was a few too many, a couple too, too many people almost. Okay. Um. There was, I don't know, just because you obviously got the the entity itself. Yeah. You've got the the widow okay. comes back. Mm-hmm. You've got the um, Gabriel guy. Yep. It, it, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of call, and they're bring, they bring back the original kind of like, uh, okay, I already forgot his name, but he's the one from Mission Impossible One, like the guy who puts Ethan Hunt on like the yeah, IMF. Yeah, yeah. I'm already forgetting his the character's name. Right. Um. um so there. Right away, I kind of, and obviously you usually run across this in um, these movies, but it's kind of like, okay, I have to hang on everything in some of these scenes because yeah. if you miss it, you're going to, which obviously that's part of the movie, but yeah. anyway, it was, at the beginning, it was a little bit much, okay, this is what everybody's, what side everybody's on, it, it, everyone's for themselves a little bit too, so yeah. anyway. I did think that at the beginning, I thought, okay, the the setup here for the, you know, kind of the stakes and the plot and everything, it's a little bit hard to track with, it's a lot to track with, I was like, did they consult Christopher Nolan for the script? Because it's a little complex, right, honestly, right. Um, and I, I do feel like, and I think they could have done more with this, I do feel like they did... Because uh, when you're when we're t- we talk about Marvel already, yep. uh, alluding to them, Avengers: Infinity War and Endgame, we've talked about this. How there are there's so many characters. So how did they accomplish telling the story? Well, they moved almost in Infinity War in particular. The protagonist role is almost Thanos. Like the yeah. vil- and, and they kind of did that a little bit here yeah, with maybe. the villain. Um, and and this because it's it, it's kind of this. I mean, again, trying not to be too spoilery, but <laughs> the the villain is unclear as far as it's it's a it's basically a computer. That's it's kind of like right. Terminator type stuff. Yes. But there's a human kind of partner with it, and it's this Gabriel guy, which again, it's kind of a callback from right. uh, some of the origin story there of of Ethan Hunt, mm-hmm. and he's um, and so. Uh, and I will say that is something for me. But again, this is part one. What I, would, I, had, I had to tell myself this is part yeah. one. This is a lot to set up. What lot. I would honestly like to see in part two, I would like to see that, no, there is a human mastermind behind this. I don't know for me how much I can get on board with like, yeah, take down the machine. Like there's no humanity to it. So yeah. like, I don't, you know. Um, I, I can see that. That's a good point. So I would, I would, cause like they're at the, they're at the end. There's a certain development happening mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, I could, I could, I could see with this. Cause like, man, I do like this. Like they just totally played to the government. You can't trust them nowadays. Oh, oh man, they oh, went okay. all in on that. I was going to get into that later. Oh, but love yeah, that. That's, but uh-huh. when in that scene, when that kind of is developing and then it takes a turn, mm-hmm. I was like, oh no, I could have totally been in on that. Like right. these guys kind of joining forces, if you will, and like yeah. let's take down the man, if you will. But then it takes this crazy turn, which I kind of saw coming. But whatever. So okay. um, I, I I I think those are my main kind of. But again. And I, maybe that's the advantage of doing this part one, part two thing is I, I've heard much of part two, almost all of it's already shot. I was uh, actually just going to ask you, have they put out a release date for I, that yet? Well, I have also heard that the release date's potentially going to be delayed because of this writers and actors strike going on. Um, oh, that's actually, yeah. I've that's heard gonna, that's actually following up the chosen too a little bit. It's, it's, uh, it's the affecting the whole SAG guild thing. Anybody actually, involved in the guild, and I don't quite understand how all that works. It's, but it's a mess. But yeah, is. there there is potential there for it to kind of mess up the the release date of the second one. But from what I understand, most of it, the majority of it's already shot. Hey, they Tom kinda, Cruise has anything to do with it? He'll get it done. He'll, he'll make it happen. <laughs> he'll make it happen. Yeah, I mean, they shot most of this one in COVID. I mean, and right. and and so sure. they they made it happen, but. Um, so with that said, 
I don't know how much is outstanding to be shot, but I'm like, well, they could take feedback from this film and they could tweak part two to maybe like appease yeah, the audience. That's, so that's very true. So Tom, you listening? Yeah, like, yeah. We're giving hey, you your by feedback the way, Tom, right nice here. Job at Tom, sixty years old. Still, yeah, that is uh, that going. is pretty good. Yeah, Did pretty good. So I mean, again, I, I I we could dive into all kinds of details about it, but right. I I it's the I've seen several movies this summer. It's mm-hmm. it's in my top two that I've seen for sure, and it really blows oh, most no, of them away. It's really great. About, yeah. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll keep going on some things that kind of stood out to me as, okay, once again, being nitpicky. Nitpick away. The chase scene in the yellow car, <laughs> I was like, okay, this okay. needs to end 10 minutes it ago. It was a little much. That because, was like, dude, I guarantee you, that took them weeks to oh, shoot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, this is just... Well, it was, it was okay, when you, and I actually noticed this, and you, know, you probably do too, when something intense is going on, if people are starting to move and shift and kind of like, okay, you've lost people. Yeah. So that was actually something I was like, okay, this needs to stop. Yeah. So the, the chase scene, uh, they, I believe they switched to three different vehicles during that scene. Okay. Well, there's the start in the police car. They, oh, that's true. they shift over to like the stolen Just little secret service car. BMW or then something. they switch to that little yellow car you're talking about. Yeah. I kind of felt the same way at the, again, as much suspense as it was providing with the train uh-huh. derailment. I was like, I was just, maybe I was, one less car. I was just to gonna say. I, I was say um, the exact same thing. I said they they put on one too many cars. Yeah, yeah. It's like it was okay because this was a long runtime. It's like about two and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, and which isn't a total sin for me. Like we're, you know, you you're you, right. we're closer to two and a half than three, so I'm happy with that. Sure, sure. Um, but no, I I was actually gonna point out those two things. I said that the car chase was too long, and the train at the end yeah. was like okay, no. let's. Okay, going back to okay, let, one last thing I'm not gonna like. I thought they kind of short, shorted themselves selves on footage from the jump. Yeah, because is he's kind of floating, and then he just once again we're spoiling some things here. Well, he you just, saw the trailer. He just comes into the train like there was no landing, there was no, and obviously it's a surprise factor kind of. It was, but I thought I was like as much time and money and mm-hmm. prep went into that. I thought there was gonna be a little bit more. Over the shoulder, kind of floating, flying, kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe I'm but, wrong. Well, the know. thing is, is that is one of those things. And if anybody has, this is not a spoiler because it's all over the trailer. Yeah. It was kind of the big thing that that grabbed you in the trailer. Oh, oh yeah. Is Tom Cruise does this for real? Like, like they did some CG to make the ramp look like a uh, grass, like and grass and rocks. But like he really did this cliff jump on oh, yeah. a motorcycle he and did. then parachute off of it. He did. Um, and but yeah, I thought the same thing. I thought. Well, I've already seen it a thousand times because I've seen the trailer a thousand times. Exactly. You know, there was some maybe a little more to it. They kind of cut a, f- a few more shots in there, and you yeah. know, they had like particular the close up of him, like you know, I mean, like he's really doing that, and they've got oh, like a guy oh. free falling with him. Oh, like yeah. I know that's how they did it. Right. So there was a. It was kind of like you might have got like think of what you saw in the trailer mm-hmm. and maybe double it. Like that's yeah. about what you got. Yeah, maybe. Um, but again, that's what happens when you put your best stuff in the trailer. And, you know, I will say that there's, I cannot remember a moment in the film, in the actual movie, that it's like, yeah, I don't, I, I like, like a big moment that it's like, mm-hmm. well, yeah, I saw this in the trailer. You know what I'm saying? Right. And like that is the thing. And it's, it's a hard balance because you're, you're in those big studios, you're working with marketing and they're like, oh, we got to put the best stuff in and right, you know, the course. directors want to withhold it or whatever. Of course. But I mean, again, like we're kind of nitpicking a little bit, but yeah. I mean, it was, it again, it was good. I, I do say again, most edge of, edge of my seat I've been since right. I did watch, uh, did, did see, um, you know, Top Gun Maverick. Uh, and I would recommend it. I mean, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm I say go check it out. You know, if you haven't yet, see it. Um, I think it's definitely worth a theater watch. That's for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, you know, that's always one of the things I want to say is like, is this worth seeing in the theater? And there's there's a lot on my list that I'm like, no. Um, but for this one, yeah, it definitely makes the go go see it in the theater. Um, again, it's I, I don't know what's best for us to review this when it's so fresh or for me to sit I, here and process yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, a couple, um, couple things. You want to wrap this one up or? No, no, no. no. Okay. Uh, go a little bit more. Couple, like, couple more things that I, I did like. Um, I thought the seen at the um, kind of the desert storm type thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought that was very well choreographed. Yep. It was yep. good. A lot of over the shoulder, kind of back and forth. Mm-hmm. It's all about timing. I mm-hmm. thought that was actually really cool. Um, something, <laughs> something I didn't like. I actually forgot this one. On the bridge in Venice or whatever, mm-hmm. when, you know, kind of a big moment there. Yeah, big moment there. 
there was a lot of shots that felt like we were in like a, a, a ride of like Pirates of the Caribbean at Disney World. Just like, <laughs> no, really, like yeah. the, the fog and the, it, if you actually watch the characters, it's like, okay, they're really choreographing the crap out of this. It was thing. almost like a dance. A yeah, it yeah. really I know it didn't about. feel I like a. That. There's that one particular shot that it was a cool shot, yeah. but it was, it felt very, uh, I know what you're talking about. It yeah. felt very, it was like, it, uh, probably not a drone. It was probably a crane. Yes. It like, exactly. Like, it was kind of like, we're, we're lingering. And it, here's the thing. Yeah. The shot was long enough to where you really paying attention to the characters. And it was kind of like, this isn't, this is one reason spinoff. I've always loved the Bourne series because of the authenticity mm-hmm. of the fights. The, those There's are... There's never any music. Yep. It's all just very rough, very grab whatever you can. Yep. It, there's zero choreography. I mean, obviously well, there, is, there is, but, but it feels... It feels authentic. It feels like two guys fighting yep. for their life, yep. okay? Yep. This particular fight, it was like, this is getting... Once again, I'm really tearing this apart. I mean, I still give the whole thing an eight. Um, yeah. Yeah. Something else I really liked was I thought the scene, the very first scene of kind of like they're at some kind of office or something with all the people kind of explaining the thing. To oh, the yeah, yeah. That was very well done. It was, it was actually a very long scene. It was. But I thought there that was too, never a dull moment. It was It was a great very... way to do exposition. Okay. Here, okay. This is something I know you're a big fan of. Every line meant something. Yep. There was no kicking around. It was just kind of, okay, everything everyone is saying is pertinent to the story yep. and the development. Yep. And Every... Dude, as soon as that guy walked in, I said, that's a fake. Somebody, yeah. somebody. Yeah, I was like, well, he's know? obviously, like, not supposed to be here. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was yeah. it was this, you know, because I do. I, I think one of the kind of crutches that storytellers can use in film is... Um, trying to do too much with exposition. Yeah. So instead of showing, you're telling. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's like, if you can show, show. Right. You know? But this, in this case, you can see why it's like, well, they have to tell. You have to have some exposition, yes. some explaining. And the way they broke up the lines mm-hmm. and, and everything was, was really done uh, really well. I did see a lot of crossover, uh, or I say a lot, a few crossover people from Top Gun. I was just uh, going to say the old the black guy. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that guy was uh, kind of similar vo- position. I yeah, do like that I guy. love his voice. I actually yeah, forget his get name, it. but he's... Uh, some, I want to say something Parcel or something like he, that. Yeah, he's, he's excellent. Um, and I thought that the, you know, the two agents that are chasing Ethan Hunt, uh, I thought that the guy there, is he one of the pilots? One of the younger pilots um, that, that Maverick is training? Oh. Another... I, Coyote or wolf. Yeah, coyote or, or what? It looked like payback, maybe. I, payback. Yeah. yeah, I need to look it up. It's possible. Uh, but I, I thought guess. it might have been. It's I thought it might have been. That he is, but um, but it, anyways, it was it was good. I will make. I mean, you got. You, did you have more? No, there I, on your I was list? actually just thinking. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was this? There really wasn't anything about this from the air. There's usually some kind of element in Mission Impossible from the air of some kind, like. The, the, obviously, the big halo jump. There's been well, I mean, his his cliff jump. I mean, that's probably yeah, I guess because the halo jump was the big stunt of the last one, right? I think. But like the whole time, like you know, he okay, Top Gun. He's obviously in the the planes, but um, I guess there was helicopters in the last one too. Yeah, well, I guess we kind of stayed on the ground. I, I was just kind of thinking through that. It's yeah, well, and you know, my, my thought is, uh, is this part one? So again, what's part two yeah. got uh, ready? And I mean, I will make this, I think, last comment about this. If you are a woman in the Mission Impossible universe, do not fall in love with Ethan Hunt. Just don't. <laughs> don't. Yeah, I don't, think we don't, all don't do could that. learn that lesson. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, great film. Yeah, it was, it was actually really good. I mean... Uh, yeah. Yep. It's I, last thing. Last thing I'll say. Oh you yeah, go kind of to this a little bit. Is I do. Okay, I've told you before. My, some of my favorite stuff is if if something is real, I can get behind it. Meaning, kind of like the whole thing you're talking about. Okay, is there someone pulling strings here a little bit? Mm-hmm. But something that made it real for me is that every government wants this. Yep. Everybody wants control. Mm-hmm. What could we do with this? Like, yeah. And kind of you know, like you even said, it was almost like. Hollywood kind of saying like, uh, yeah, don't trust anybody. Yeah, no, I mean, they really I mean, like, did. Sh- I mean, right out, flat to yep. the camera, like, yeah, this is, yeah. you know, the whole, like, what is truth, all mm-hmm. this kind of stuff. I thought that was very straightforward, which is 
scary, but at the same time, yeah. I actually really like that part. I mean, it might be embellished, you know, because it's like you would like of, to think it's not that bad, but it's like, yeah, it's probably pretty close. Yeah, yeah. You know, so at, like I said, that. that one part where they seem like the government's going to kind of team up with a bad guy, you kind of get that idea, right. and, and the one guy's talking about you know, kind of a new world order and, you know, eliminating oh, patriotism and yeah, things. Like, that's right. I thought they the whole, painted him as the bad guy. That's right. Yeah. I, I forgot. I thought yeah. about the whole new world order when he said yep. eliminate the old dudes and the patriot. Yeah, yep. that's right. And, I mean, I will say the film is uh, pretty woke free. There's uh, yeah. no, nobody's yeah, nobody's would, in the alphabet crew from what I, I, would, I would say so. so. Yeah, uh, yeah pr- pretty good. So, yeah, like I said, I really loved it. Um, it's It's definitely of the big blockbusters of the summer. Oh, the big for studios, sure. it's the best. For sure. Um, now I'm gonna move my way backwards yep. through what I've seen. I don't know if you've seen any of these, and I'm not. Gonna, I'm gonna try not to take a lot of time. You just, I'll just kind of spit them out, and then we can dialogue about them for a second each. Okay. Um, the the one that I saw before this was actually last week. I saw uh, Indiana Jones, the new Indiana oh, Jones movie, yeah. Dial of Destiny. Now, um, the here's kind of mm, unpopular opinion. But Indiana Jones, to me, I just never thought it was all that amazing. I just never did. Okay. Raiders of the Lost Ark, the original one, eh, okay, pretty good. Because that's late 80s. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe late late or mid 80s, maybe. Okay. Um, I can't. No, I think it's early 80s, actually. Is I think it it's really? kind of early to mid 80s, because then Temple of Doom is the second one. I did not like that at all. It's just weird. Okay. Um, and then the third one is... Um, oh, cru- uh, last of the uh, the, you know, the last crusade. Um, that one might get a little bit better, uh, but yeah, as we as we oh the, the one that they came out with the uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which is the one they came out in the two thousands. Mm-hmm. That's garbage. It's horrible. I had actually never seen it, but I was like, well, I'm gonna watch it leading okay. into this. Total trash. Really? I mean, they, yeah. I mean, <laughs> by now I, that came out in like two thousand eight. Uh, I mean, they bring like aliens in, and it was just oh, like wow. oh, weird. Like, there's always this moment in Indiana Jones where everything is explainable until the end. There's always this one weird moment. Okay. Um, like in Raiders of the Lark, Lost Ark, uh, ever when they open the Ark of the Covenant, the power of God comes out and melts everybody's faces. I mean, that's that's the weird moment. Okay. In the Temple of Doom, a voodoo priest pulls the heart out of a guy's chest and the guy still lives and the heart continues to beat in his hand and it's weird. That's super weird. Wow. Uh, and then in, uh, what was it? Yeah, and then the next one, last, the, last, the Last Crusade, somebody drinks from the cup of death and they like shrivel up into a skeleton right away, okay? Right. And then so the one, that the kind of the big weird moment in Crystal Skull is Aliens. And it just was huh. too weird. To, yeah. And it's universally accepted as like the worst Indiana Jones movie ever. This latest one, Dial of Destiny, is not near that bad. Okay. So there's five. This is the fifth, and it better be the last. Because okay. the biggest critique I have of it is that, I mean, Harrison Ford's 80 years old. Is he really? He's 80, 80 years old, years? and they are having him do, and I know a lot of it. He, there's no way he's doing it. Like, he's got to have stunt guys. Right. But they are portraying this 80-year-old man. Because they're they're saying, like, yeah, he is an old man. Like, that's... Okay. They are, they are portraying him as doing these crazy things and crazy stunts. And it actually is funny in moments when you know it's not him to see him run. He's, like, he's struggling to run. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, really, like, he's hobbling. Wow. And so um, it, it, it was... That's probably the weakest part of it is the fact that they're trying to get this, like I said, 80 year old man okay. to do that. Now at the beginning, the opening like 10 minutes, uh, they de-aged him because they wanted to go back to like kind of the original, like young. Oh. So they digitally de-aged him and it was impressive. I mean, you wow. couldn't tell, you could not tell. I've seen that done before okay. and you can tell. You couldn't tell at all. I mean, yeah. it was very impressive how they, I mean, he just looked like Harrison Ford from the eighties. I mean, it was, huh. it was very That's well done. Um, but yeah, I mean, the only, the other thing I will say to the movie's credit is I heard a bunch of people, I say a bunch, I, I read some stuff, heard some commentators saying that it was a, um, that, that this movie was, you know, woke and like overly like over into feminism I didn't really get that vibe because, okay. I mean, there was a, there's a, like, kind of his main, if you want to call it, sidekick is a woman. And, you know, she's a little bit, like, kind of feisty, I guess. But okay. I did not get this, like, everybody was portraying as, oh, this is showing a weak man dependent on a woman. Yeah. I didn't really get that from it at all. Okay. I mean, he is a weak man because he's old, <laughs> you know. But <laughs> I'm 80 years old. When it was all said and done, it, it was okay. 
Should you just rush to go see it in a theater? Yeah, I don't know. It's probably it'll hit Disney Plus at some time in the next you know month or did two. Did they did they set anything up for the future? No, and or? they and they really never do. Indiana okay. Jones never has kind of okay. left it open, but they but they did leave it open ended. See, I I really do, man. I wish. I and for a moment you thought they're going to kill him off, and I thought good, like that is the a, always a great way to see a a character go is through a noble death you know yeah. iron man um, you know um bond dark, yeah, bond, bond, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly mm-hmm. um and so but no he survived and you know whatever so okay, this is this is something interesting jumping back for just a second i've always wanted because I've, eventually mission impossible will end yes because it, it will. will die with I Tom think, Cruise. I, I, honestly from what i've heard the next one is it this might be it yeah you have to wonder how they're gonna Send everybody out. I do, man. I, because, I mean, you can't... Okay, obviously, okay, take some, like, a uh, uh, a series like Bond, okay? Mm-hmm. There has been, like, seven Bonds, or whatever, okay? There, there'll Several. always be another Bond, yep. okay? Because that's just the way... The story is meant to evolve with time. Mm-hmm. You know, okay, but, like, Tom Cruise... Like, or Mission Impossible is Tom Cruise. Yes. There yes. is. There's not going to be like, hey, we're going to keep this going. So you always wonder how they're going to send this off. Yeah. Which it's either going to be one of those things where like, hey, please everybody or disappoint everybody. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, kinda... I, I I do, man. I, I'll stand by it. Like I I hope Ethan Hunt dies. I hope he dies. I hope that's how they send him <laughs> off. I hope he gives this noble Iron Man type death because I just think that that is the best for way the, to for the greater good. To yeah, exactly. Because yeah. it's exactly what his character would do. It's you that's know? true. That's very true. Um, and so. Uh, but Good. yeah, they didn't yep. do that with Indiana Jones. Okay, and yeah. I wish they would have, but they didn't. <laughs> hey, Harrison uh, Ford's like, "Come on, guys! Yeah. Like, I don't want to do anymore." Sorry. Well, because they they killed Han Solo. They killed Han Solo in uh, oh, um, yeah, you know, know The Force I Awakens, know. and I thought it was great. Good. Like I thought it was. I mean, you're shocked, but it's like yeah. makes sense, yeah. you know. So, anyways, uh, so that was Indiana Jones. Now, yep. uh, Sound of Freedom. Um, oh, that's right. Sound yeah, of Freedom. I do. I do want to see you this. Need to? I don't want to, but I want to. Yeah, it, it's one of those. I mean, okay. So first of all, it really is just a. Even if it was completely fictitious, mm-hmm. it's generally really good. It's kind of like Taken, but like it's the same idea. Like this guy you, is you going. Mentioned this. Yeah. yeah, he's like going to rescue kids, yeah. um, and he's got these two kids in particular. Well, yeah, I guess it winds up being one kid in particular that he's looking for. Okay. Um, but he saves a bunch in the process. Okay. But it's a true story. Right. Um, and there, yeah. I've listened to interviews about it and stuff. There's very little like embellishment. Like this is really based on wow. a true story. Um, in fact, the the guy uh, who the, the char- Tim Ballard, the man, mm-hmm. the main character who uh, Jim Caviezel, guy from Passion of the Christ, plays. Yeah, he has said he's like, yeah, there's stuff that we like. He's like, there were way more operations going on, but like the movie just didn't have time to tell it. Wow. You know. Um, yeah. So this you is, could probably have a whole series I th- of this, which I, is. If, who knows? They I was gonna say could... if I understood the interview, one interview I was listening to, right? Like there, there's probably gonna be a sequel where they tell another. Okay, like, kind well, dude, of, let me. Because this guy's you. this is what he's been doing like for years. Wow, and I, and I will say this: I think this movie has upset like. Oh, it has. The, it's it's causing people. Like, yeah. people are ticked. About I don't this because of. Get that. I mean, no. But, dude, that's not what they want. To, that's yep. not their narrative. It doesn't fit yep. their, you know, it's, they don't want people to know how bad, I'm like, kind of like you, you didn't realize, you know, maybe, I mean, you know, you know how things are, but you don't realize like, oh, this is really an issue. Yeah. And of course, you know, we could go into the whole Hollywood, cup, but that's a whole other thing. But it's, it's making people upset. It is. It's, and of course, this, this movie is blowing other movies out of the water. Yes. It's yeah. like, we don't, this is just like, no, this is, anyway. On, on July 4th in particular, it, on yeah. the day of July 4th, it beat Indiana Jones. And yeah. Indiana Jones was supposed to just rock the box office on July 4th weekend. Right. And it, 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 it has, uh, it has beat, or at least beat it on that one day. Right. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, it is, it is just a. I need to see that. I actually told my wife that we need to see it. She's like, I don't want to see it. I was yeah. like. I, I it, get it. I get it. It's hard to watch, but you, yeah. you you have to. And I will say too, they it's a PG thirteen movie. Okay. And I mean, so they do a really good job of it, kind of making you realize what's going on without having to show you what's going on. Right, and that's that's good. You know, it, it, I mean, literally, there's one scene in particular, and, and there might be a there's one I'm thinking of, where literally like 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 there's a it's an outside shot of a window, mm-hmm. and there's a pedophile in there with a kid. He closes the shade. They intentionally hold that shot for probably what felt like 30 seconds. It probably was really? five to 10 seconds. Really? Okay. Because you're going, 
I know what's going on behind that. Right. And it just makes you sick. Yeah. Um, and so there's that moral a- aspect of it mm-hmm. where you go, oh, this is disgusting that yeah. this goes on. Yeah. Um, but there's also this very exciting element of like this guy going and rescuing kids like mm-hmm. in the like from these crazy situations. Yeah. And like I said, this guy's really doing it, and he's still doing it from what I understand. Really, is this? Is this a um, is this all take place like on American soil or is no? It it, it's overseas. He's That's extract- what I thought. Yeah. I wasn't sure about so, that. So, so the thing is, is the um, I think from what if I remember all the stats, right? The majority of children that get caught up into human slavery mm-hmm. are from other a lot of it's from south america so that's where a lot of it happens for sure for uh, a sure. lot and, and like like even asia places like russia that that's or like like that part of europe that's where they come from but mm-hmm. here's what and i did not realize this okay the number one consumer of these like people buying these sex slaves children's sex slaves is america oh i i actually didn't know that i i don't I know, know why that. i had missed that stat but they showed that stat at the end and i thought i mean it's one of those things where it's like i knew it was happening mm-hmm. but to this degree right. you know and i think that's what every, everybody knows everybody knows that this is still going on like it's yeah. like slavery still exists right. and there are pedophiles in the world but to know that it's happening to such a great degree well and is, here's the thing too is okay how many times have we all been in a target or wherever and you see these pictures of missing people or whatever that's a lot of times that's where yeah. people are missing and it's yeah. it's one of those things that we've seen it for so long it's just like oh somebody's and missing but that's it's a reality and it's horrible and it's yeah. one of those things like I mean a grown person could probably just break down and cry about it because yeah. we're, we're fathers we yep. you know we were there I'm there I now I mean they, they've know? got opening it's, footage like real life footage that's how they open the movie with okay. real life footage of like literally people just picking up babies and walking away with them like there's a there's a mother and you can tell it's in like a poor country sure there's a mother for whatever reason kind of sleeping maybe she's homeless sleeping on the ground with her kid mm-hmm. and the, this dude just grabs it and walks away wow and don't get me wrong the though it may happen more rampantly in other countries the actual taking of children happens in america too so yeah oh, oh, watch yeah. your kids yeah, yeah um yeah. but yeah everyone needs to see it because uh, for the like i said for me the two reasons the the light that it sheds on this horrible darkness but also it's just generally good i mean it is it's one of the best movies i've seen definitely this year wow. um it's really really good it's, um and, and like i said hard to watch sure. um but, but i wonder really how good. that will be available via streaming in the future well it's angels so same same people have chosen so that's i'm sure right. okay that's right um yeah. i'm yeah. sure they'll stick it on the uh angel app at some point but that's true. this is one of those movies Go see the theater because it's generally like a good cinematic movie, but yeah. to support it, like just go be like, like kind of like let the let, let the box office know that you're for this. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and that's it's still point. out. I mean, I don't know by the time this releases, I would think that it's still out. Yeah. Um, when, uh, it's been out of what a month? Maybe? Yeah, it came out uh, July fourth. Okay, you, was you its just said that. technical launch date or that. whatever? Okay. So, so there was that one. Uh, backing it up, the one I saw before that, and I won't spend a lot of time, was The Flash. And in typical DC fashion, it sucked. Um, <laughs> it, it had potential, and it's not their worst. I think the worst part about The Flash... Did you ever Have you ever seen any of these DC Never movies? seen okay. any of Don't them. Don't waste your time. Um, the worst part about The Flash, uh, it, to me, and I thought this because he pe- appears in the Justice League movie and everything, yep. is the actual person who plays him. He's annoying. He's obnoxious. Like, really? his character is annoying, and he's horrible off screen. Like, he is just a horrible person in real life. Really? And so the combination who, who of... Who plays this Ezra thing? Miller is his name. Um, I, mean, probably, I, know, I know what he looks like. Yeah, I yeah. Him, but... I mean, he is... He's just this awful, like, like he's just there they generally like almost pulled the movie because his personal life has gotten so messed up really like he's um he's in where, the, where did he come from like what did he is he I don't, anything else you know i his... i had seen him in small roles and stuff before but i can't even pinpoint where he was okay. this was kind of his breakout role. because he's probably what mid-30s I, mean, I don't know man i wouldn't be surprised he's late he's pretty young because i mean he's okay. portraying a teenager you right know? The flash is a teen and okay, he, he yeah. looks very young okay um but he he is a part of in real life he's part of the alphabet squad and so he okay. plays to that and he just says, "Oh yeah, I'm. I'm. I don't know what he is. I think he's I did a non-binary or something. So I can do what I want." Interesting. Um, and so, but all that aside, if I didn't know all the personal stuff, he's just annoying. Okay. Like he, in, in the, his character is obnoxious, and there's two of them. 
because it's this multiverse thing going oh, on. That's right. It's annoying. So does he play two people? He does. Like, okay, so which is kind of cool. And oh, I like okay. the Flash. I like what the Flash can do. I like his yeah. powers. Yeah. I would like it if anybody else was playing it. I probably would have enjoyed the movie more. Okay. Um, it's Good not sense. that I thought it was particularly like horrible and weak in terms of storyline and plot. Uh, it okay. wasn't. It definitely could have been better in that way. But yeah, it was just the. That guy just can't stand him, and you know yeah. DC's just dug us such a hole. I don't know if they'll ever get out of it. Yeah. We were just looking at that <laughs> we were, poster, and I was like, "Hey, what's this?" He's like, "Don't waste your time." Yeah, don't waste your time. Okay. Um, so the that, there's that one. Now the one I saw before that took my daughter to see the Little Mermaid. Um, oh yeah, that's right. And this is another one. Okay, look, everybody made this big deal that it's woke and whatever. Okay, here's what they did. They they casted Ariel as black. It's weird. It's it's a little different. Kind of, and it kind of doesn't. I make would have any... stuck with a fair skinned redhead, to be yeah. honest with you. Just I mean... because it's like, well, you're remaking the cartoon. Yeah. Um, but I mean, she can sing. She's got a really good voice. Yeah, sure. Um, and and I mean, it was it was that. I mean, it's an interesting choice. Yeah. But overall, like, it's generally just a frame for frame remake of the cartoon. Kind of like Lion King. Oh yeah, were, like all of them. It's a frame by frame. And yeah. some people hate that. Some people love that. Even the Beast was that way. Yeah, almost. I'm just of the opinion. I'm like, look, like whatever. Like my daughter thought it was pretty cool to see. Yeah. It, it's not. It's not. I don't know. It's nothing special. Sure. Uh, I, and again, I, I think this is definitely one. Yeah, just wait to see it on Disney Plus. Like, don't flock to the theater to see this one. Right. right. Um, but you know, it was. It was. It was. It, again, it was just exactly the same okay. in terms of like the. I think they added like one or two new songs. Um, okay. You know. Um, the the uh, the probably the most the worst part of it is the uh, the 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 seagull or whatever just the the voice is annoying it's uh, that uh, what's her name Aquafina you ever Aquafina oh she's like yeah, 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 kind yeah, of, yeah she's got an annoying voice um, but anyways other than that like whatever it's not fantastic watching right. it if you got Disney Plus and it hits streaming check it out right. what else you got uh, Guardians I got two more Guardians of the Galaxy three definitely the best Marvel has done in a while. Okay. But nothing great. Okay. Remind me. Endgame came out in what? 2019. 19. Yeah. Okay. That's already been three years the or so. Only, that's, wow, that's really the something. only two Marvel entities to come out since, since Endgame that I believe are good is Loki, mm -hmm. season one. Um, but I'm almost, I'm honestly afraid they're going to mess it up with season two. I don't, I don't have a lot of hope. Okay, so they're not streaming that yet because I that's felt like. That's coming in the fall. Okay. Cause yeah. I felt like I finished watching Loki. I feel like it's been a long time, yeah. but. So there's Loki and then Spider-Man No Way Home. Fantastic. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home is so good, but yeah. Marvel can't even claim that as their own because it's technically a Sony. Uh, Sony yeah, and owns it kind of and they're very, they have a lot to do with the story. They just oh, basically oh, allow yeah. them to make them it. to integrate with yeah. Marvel. Um, uh, but Guardians, uh, of the three Guardians movies, which I know you're not a fan of, and they're not my favorite, of the three, I don't know. It's not better than the first one, and I don't know. It's been so long since I saw the second one, I really can't remember. Yeah. Um, it wasn't special. Uh, I Again, like, I don't like fake deaths, and there were a couple of yeah, them. Yeah, you mentioned this. Don't like fake deaths. Like, if you're going to let, if, if I'm going to mourn for the character, don't don't take it back you right, know? right um and uh that that so anyways eh, it was okay now the worst one that i saw uh, and the last one we'll review is fast x fast x is garbage <laughs> um fast nine was close to garbage fast x was true garbage um yeah. they have gotten progressively worse <laughs> Hold on. and you're the one who got me on them no it's I, you no but i told you <laughs> listen i told you i said stop at five because <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I, I, that's fair. i'd be saying because five is the best that's when they bring in the rock mm -hmm. that's when it's just like okay if you stop right well, here, i think i think even to seven seven is the last one with walker okay you could go that far yeah Anything after because that. Because the way they the way they ended, I'm like, okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. That was the to me, okay. True, but, true fast fans said, end it. Yep. It's over. Yep. He literally went into the sunset. Yep. Just let it it's die. Perfect. You know, but anyway, but no. true true story. I saw something on Instagram the other day. <laughs> it was a, it was a cartoon, you know, drawn. Mm -hmm. It was like the title was like Fast 37, and Vin Diesel's in a wheelchair going like that. <laughs> I was like, dude, that is, they just need to they, stop. They gotta stop. Well, here's the thing. But, okay, obviously, they're obviously making money, or they would stop. Okay, so, yeah, and this is what I uh, realized, they, they make a lot of money overseas. That's gotta be they what it is. They make crazy money in, like, China off That's these gotta movies. be what it For is. What are, I mean, the Chinese are just like, yeah, you know, they, they yeah. love, you know, watching... Uh, <laughs> 
just they, they, um, because it went, and you know this now that you've seen all of them. It went from a an American street racing, yeah, street racing, rough, okay. kind of cool to like international like spy conspiracy and yeah, yeah it's, like, it just got so out of hand. And, and I used to be a big fan, a, but it's, a lot of people would say, "Well, hold up, you know, you, you can sit here and say because Mission Impossible has some ridiculous stunts, ridiculous things oh, happen." Oh yeah. Fast X, that's kind of become their thing, is, or Fast and, Gen- Fast and Furious, is the ridiculous stunts they do and still doing them with cars for the most part. First of all, the stunts in this one are just, they are just too much. Yeah. They are too, they are going too far. And here's, here's what I'm going to, Mission Impossible, we, again, we can nitpick it. Mm-hmm. It's a good story. It's a great story. It's a story. solid story. Great story. Good acting. Yep. Good character development. By and large, yes. Fast X, no. Garbage story. Mm-hmm. Garbage acting. I think I told you this. You, you, you did tell me. There this. literally are scenes because you know when you film, you have multiple takes. You right. know, hey, we. I mean, in Hollywood, man, they'll do they'll do thirty takes a, a, a cut. You right. know, um, and uh, you, it really feels like they were just like, okay, well, these dialogue scenes, we don't have a lot of time. Uh, okay, just say your line. Okay, cool. Next, you say we, your line. We've done that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but it really felt that way because really? like some of the acting, it was just, and these are like paid professional actors yeah. that you know of wow. um and so yeah i mean it, it just was it was just again across the board hmm. do not recommend and it is a part one so there will be a is it really yeah they leave you they I... leave you on this what's supposed to be a big cliffhanger and I guess technically it is i care less yeah. i just don't care you know wow. i mean when the next one comes out i don't know You'll go. <laughs> I, I will, because that's what I do. I do that so I can pre- so I can keep you people out yeah, there that, from going. That, that's true. You're welcome. That's true. Um, but uh, yeah, don't, don't. And even when it streams, I don't know. Like if you are that invested in these characters, go for it. Well, like I, that's I, your I call. I, I think I've told you before. I have not seen nine or ten. I've seen eight. When I think what's her face, Charlie Theron comes yeah, on. Or yeah, whatever. and she's back in this one. And yeah. I, but I have not seen the one with uh, Jason. What's his face? Uh, then, yeah, uh, the, 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 Cena, John Cena. John oh, Cena okay, was Cena. the bat, and that's it. Uh, yeah, I'm just I've gonna tell you, man. I've not seen Cena, or I guess I guess nine and ten. Not yeah. seen nine and so ten. So Cena is made out to be this big bad villain in nine, and now he's a good guy all of a sudden. Yeah. And you're like, wait, what? I mean, they they did that with Statham. Yeah. Statham not was true. The, true. Statham was the villain of seven. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Seven, and then he comes back and he's good. And I don't know. I yeah. Don't so, know. anyways, it's it's not worth. Hey, there's kind of these different levels, like see in the theater. Mm-hmm. Maybe when it comes out on digital, like buy it on Amazon or, or, or iTunes. And then there's, if it happens to hit a streaming service you're already subscribed to, yeah. check it out. <laughs> this definitely falls into that. Like, okay. don't go pay, don't like go subscribing to Peacock or wherever right. it shows up on just to watch it. Or like I said, spend extra money on it. Like, oh, I already have Peacock and it's there. Okay, cool. I'll watch it. I don't sure. know where it'll show up. But so yeah, that brings us up to speed on where we're at on, uh, you know, summer movies. I know it was a little bit of a longer episode there. Is there anything that you've seen that's worth? Worth noting, you know, um, whether it's uh, television, whatever. I did. I did see The Covenant. I told you about. Oh, yeah. That's, you did tell me that. Newer and I actually wanted to see that, but I couldn't find it in theaters anywhere. Did you I, just I stream it? I just streamed it. Okay. I streamed it on Amazon Prime, I think. Um, okay. Very good. Okay. It's a true story. Very patriotic. Mm, yeah. Um, no, nothing in it that's like woke or anything. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. Very, that's what pretty, I heard about it. Pretty, yeah. pretty good movie. Um, what else? Anything I'm trying to think that was newer that I've seen. Um, but that that one sticks out for sure. That yeah, was, yeah. You know, and any, anything that's always patriotic, I'm always like, yes, patriotic stuff. Yes, yeah, and I think Big Milestone, uh, you finished The Office since we last recorded. I, I think did it finish so. The Office. Yeah, well yeah. and you, you enjoyed you, it. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was good. And there's a. Uh, there's, there's some kind of meme out there that says it's like you pretty much. Oh, I know what it is. It's a guy that's digging through rock and he comes short of the diamonds and it says fans that stopped watching the office, like after season one or something, Uh it's like, if you keep watching it, yeah, you do. And everybody told me that. It's like, you know what? This first season stinks. Yeah. It's it's not great. It's yeah. like we actually said a minute ago. I was like, did somebody make this on a VHS camera? <laughs> really? Like, yeah. I don't know, but yeah, I did finish that, and actually, I'm gonna restart it. And um, yeah. Well, good, good, good. Okay. Well, I think that'll conclude uh, our content for this episode. Uh, oh. Next next time we will talk about uh, Oppenheimer. Yeah. We got a couple that yeah. we're gonna talk about. We got a, we got a, we got a few. That one that one I was thinking about trying to record after that, but I don't know if we get it out in time. But that is definitely gonna be in our next review. And I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what else is going on that's that's my next that's kind of the last big one of the summer yeah to, to i think me. it is the last big one um but yeah yeah so we'll we'll, we'll see about that one and yeah so thanks for joining us and we'll we'll see you next time 
Hey, thanks again for joining us for this episode. And remember to subscribe on YouTube where you can actually watch video versions of each episode. Of course, you can follow the audio version on Apple Podcast. And Spotify actually has the video version. I don't mention that very often, so you can actually watch the video there as well. And if you want to connect with me, be sure to head over to mustincrease.com to see uh, what we do for churches, businesses, and beyond. We are really glad that you joined us, and we look forward to seeing you next time as we continue to increase truth and inspire hope right here on the Must Increase podcast.